In this lecture, you'll learn about the installation of the NetApp VSC, that's a virtual storage console. The UVA, Unified Virtual Appliance for VSC, Virtual Storage Console, the VASA provider and SRA storage replication adapter is deployed as a virtual machine OVA in the vSphere environment. OVA files are used very commonly in VMware. What they are is a virtual machine with prepackaged settings. So if you weren't using an OVA file, the way that you would normally install and configure a virtual machine is you would install the operating system and then any other additional applications and software on there, and then also configure the settings. When you use an OVA file, it means that you don't have to go through all those different steps. It's a pre-packaged virtual machine, which includes that virtual machine's operating system, the additional software, and any desired settings on there as well. So it allows you to get that virtual machine deployed a lot more quickly. The UVA can be deployed with either a Windows deployment of vCenter server or the newer VMware vCenter server virtual appliance, the VCSA, which runs as a Linux-based virtual machine. VSC, VASA provider, and SRA can be deployed in a single installation. So before the UVA was available, VSC, VASA provider, and SRA were three separate pieces of software that had to be installed and configured separately. Now that the UVA is available, it includes all three. So you just have to do one installation and you can do all the configuration from there as well. So it makes things a lot more convenient. Now I should talk a bit about the terminology here as well. The VSC has been available for quite a long time. And when people are talking about the VSC, they call it the VSC, but they may also be talking about the UVA. So if you hear a NetApp storage engineer talking about the VSC, the virtual storage console, in general, they're talking about the VSC, the VASA provider and the SRA all rolled into one, which is the UVA. So the UVA and the VSC do actually have slightly different meanings. UVA is the OVA file, which includes all three of them rolled together. The VSC is a component of the UVA. But unlikely you would hear somebody talking about the UVA in general conversation. Typically, we just call the whole thing the VSC. So when you hear me talking about the VSC, Virtual Storage Console, in this section, I'm not generally just talking about the VSC. Typically, I'll also be including the VASA provider and the SRA in that. The VSC and VASA provider are enabled by default in the latest version. When you deploy the UVA, SRA is not. The vCenter server and the VSC UVA must be deployed on different VMware hosts. So that's why in our lab environment, We've got the VCSA virtual machine running on the ESXi1 host, and we've got the VSC virtual machine running on the ESXi2 host. We needed to install two separate hosts because they can't both be running on the same one. The UVA should be installed on an ESXi host traditional data store on ONTAP storage. The reason is it can't be installed in a VVOL because the VASA provider, which is required to manage VVOLs, must be outside the VVOL data store to manage it. So you would have a chicken and an egg problem if you try to install it in a VVOL data store. Redundancy for the VSC can be provided through the standard vSphere high availability or fault tolerance features. The VSC runs as a virtual machine, so you can use VMware's built-in redundancy features, which is HA and fault tolerance to provide redundancy for that virtual machine. No extra or special redundancy configuration is required on the UVA itself. You just use the standard settings inside VMware. Each VSC instance must be registered with only one vCenter server instance. That one-to-one -one pairing between VSC and vCenter enables you to manage all instances in both linked and non-linked mode from a single vSphere client. So it does still work 
across your different vSphere environment and data centers, but it's registered with only one vCenter server instance. If you're using SRA, each SRA instance must be registered with Site Recovery Manager, SRM, which must be registered with vCenter server. SRM is a VMware software product that helps you manage disaster recovery. And the SRA integrates with that to integrate your ONTAP storage with the SRM. The licensing requirements. A flex clone license is required for virtual machine snapshots, which are supported in vVol data stores and also clone operations. And SRA storage replication adapter, if you're using that, it requires a flex clone license to test failovers and a snap mirror license to perform failovers. You're only going to be using SRA if you are using VMware SRM. You must open ports 9083, 443 and 8143 if you have a firewall between VSC and the vCenter server. Very often you won't, but if you do have a firewall, make sure you've got those ports open. Okay, uh, point now about if the hosts and storage are in different IP subnets, which they shouldn't be. So if you use IP storage, like iSCSI or NFS, it's recommended that the ESXi hosts communicate with the ONTAP storage over the same IP subnet. So your ESXi hosts and the logical interfaces that they connect to onto the ONTAP storage system, they should be on the same IP subnet, such as 10.10.10.10, .10 .10 .10 on the ESXi host and 10.10.10.50 on the ONTAP storage system. So in the same IP subnet so that the storage traffic does not have to go via a router. But if the subnet is different between your ESXi host and the storage system, which is not recommended, you have to modify the VSC preference files. The way that you do that is you use VI and the file that you need to edit is CaminoPrefs.xml in the VSC maintenance console. Now to get more information on this, look at the installation guide for VSC. It tells you exactly what to do in there. I'm not going to cover it in a lot of detail here because it's not something that you should need to do anyway. You only need to do it if the hosts and the storage are in different IP subnets, which they should not be. If you don't modify the preferences file when they are in different subnets though, then data store provisioning will fail because VSC cannot mount the data store. The VASA provider and on-command API services. The VASA provider is enabled by default in the latest version. Didn't used to be in previous versions. It's required to manage VVOLs, storage capability profiles and alarms. You must also register on-command API services with the VASA provider to enable the VVOL dashboard and VVOL data store and virtual machine reports. So if you want to use VVOLs, then you need to have the VASA provider enabled. With having just the VASA provider enabled, you can provision and manage your VVOL data stores, but you cannot see reports and you're not going to get any information in the dashboard. So if you are using VVOLs, you are going to want to get those reports. So what you need to do is you have to also install on-command API services. On-command API services is separate software from VSC, and that gets installed into a Linux host running either CentOS or Red Hat Linux. That Linux host will typically be running as a virtual machine in your VMware environment. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.